engine build. Sorry it's taken me so long. I'm just running into problem after problem. But let me give you guys the rundown and explain to you exactly what I've been dealing with for the past few weeks. First off, you guys know I had to get the cylinders bored out to 81.75 millimeters or 30 thousandths over. You know, I bought the according rings and all of that good stuff to go with it. When I go to grind the second ring or fit the second ring and check the gap, the gap is way too big. It's like 10 thousandths over what I need it to be. Well, I went ahead and ordered 82 millimeter piston rings and had to file those down quite a bit to get to the gap I needed. I got those ground down, got those fitted, and I go to you know check the bearing clearance for the rods um, and sliding the pistons into the cylinder. These band type piston ring compressors suck. I almost screwed my block up. Here's a clip. There's a little tiny score right there. And I don't want to say it, my fingernail doesn't catch on it, but I can definitely feel it ever so slightly. I did take this block to the machine shop. The guy at the machine shop said that should be okay. And he kind of laughed and he was like, yeah, uh, that should be fine. So if you guys think otherwise, please let me know. I'm really hoping that doesn't mess up the seal. I almost screwed my block up using one of these or you just using it wrong because once I did it right, it, it I didn't even mess up once. I'm sure if you guys have used these before, you put them, you know, you put your piston in there, you slide it on top of the block and you push it in. The first couple I tried, the oil rings just pop out the bottom, pop out the bottom, it won't go into the block. I'm getting frustrated. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I might have smashed it once too three too many times with the bottom of the mallet. But nothing good ever comes from getting frustrated. I decided to breathe, took the piston out, I looked at the rings and everything. From me banging on the piston with the bottom of the mallet, I damaged the bottom oil ring, which I'll show you here. You see that chip right there? There's one, and there's actually a second chip, and you can feel it with your finger, it's very rough. As you saw from that clip, um, it basically chipped like three spots around the ring, which I'm really glad I didn't get that into the cylinder because I would have screwed it up and I would have had to rebore it. But anyways, luckily I had that second set of rings. I just grabbed one of those oil rings and filed that one down to the correct gap as the other ones and tried it again. You know, this time I looked up a few, a few more videos on YouTube and just really kind of watched. And the, the, the key thing with these band things that is making sure that the whole band as you tighten it is flush. You can see that inside it kind of folds within itself. And as you tighten it, it'll get all wonky. I would just tap it with the little Allen wrench thing that they give you uh, on all the sides to make sure it's even. And then before pressing the, the piston into the cylinder, I made sure to apply force to the top of this, not too much that I you know, messed up the block because I thought I did that too. The real secret, at least to Mike's success with these was you know, oiling everything up, oiling the bottom of this, oiling your rings, make sure everything's super, super, super clean. I was like crazy OCD about that. You know, make sure everything's clean. And then as you, know, you tighten it up and you have it fit in the cylinder, you do want to apply pressure to make sure that the bottom is flush with the cylinder walls um, because it seemed like every time I didn't have my hand up there, an oil ring would pop out the bottom and it wouldn't go in. But once I made sure it was flat all the way around and held it down while I pushed the ring, the piston in, um, it worked like a charm every time. The second time I did it, all four pistons went in first try. 
That's the last, first one I had two tries, but everything else super, super easy once I got it. So there's a little advice for you on that. Here's some quick advice actually on grinding piston rings too. I forgot I had this, so we'll cut away to that. Really wish I figured this out earlier, but I have a little tip trick for filing the piston rings. Because the gap on the first ones was way too big, but now this is tiny and it's taking forever to file it down. There's a little screw here. It's a little Allen screw that uh, helps hold in this handle. But if you can, if you can just clamp it or screw it on the side of the table like so, and this is a star pattern bit whatever it works, you should be using, I should be using an Allen bit, but I don't have it. So you just put it in that little thing and uh, it'll spin. So this is much easier than just twisting it with your hands. I was timing it before for how long I was spinning it. And this is much better. I can double the speed that I do it and cut the time in half. So, yep. So hopefully that little trick tip helped. I didn't figure it out to like the last ring. It would have saved me a lot of time. But yeah, so those are just a few problems I ran into. The second ring not fitting, chipping the bottom oil ring because I was getting frustrated that it wouldn't go into the cylinder. And then thinking that I scored the top of the deck to make it unusable with me trying to force the piston in. All of this could be fixed by just breathing and not getting angry or frustrated. So, Please, if, you, if you're ever getting angry from something, just take a break, walk away. I definitely should have, and I, I might not have messed up so many things. Those are just three problems. I was gonna make a whole video about the piston ring gapping, the clearances, assembling everything, but with everything I had to deal with, it's, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's together. The rotating assembly is done. All the bearings are in, the windage tray, the oil pickup, I have the oil pump um, and the rear main seal all in place. Now let me explain to you guys the fourth issue I'm dealing with. As I was putting in the oil pump, show you guys. First off, you should know that the oil pump comes with five bolts, right? So three of the bolts are this size and two of them are like um, two millimeters longer. So that's what screwed me up. As you can see here, yeah, I, busted a bolt off into the block. That's what I've been dealing with for the past few days. You can see here, I was putting on the water pump and I didn't realize that there were different sizes and it just broke right off. They do sell extractor tools to get these out, which let's just, let's just zoom in here a little bit. Yeah, there's an extractor tool in there, broken off. So, I tried that, I drilled through the bolt, bought a nice little, let me see if I can find it. This is the broken extractor tool. You can see there, it just snapped clean off. These extractor tools and taps are made from a hardened steel, which is extremely difficult to drill. So I went to the store and I bought some diamond hole saws. Taps or extractors break off in the bolt. All that's left is to drill it completely out. Yeah, let's see if I can drill this out. 